So parents out there, have you ever said this to yourself? Where was this info when I need it, especially in school? Well, worry not, we're here today. I want to share something with you that you probably wish you had it on your own math journey that would have saved time and headaches. Maybe you didn't have the greatest math journey, but your child still can. So here's the thing. Our school systems don't always set our kids up for success. So to help that, I developed this giant roadmap behind me that have separated kindergarten through 12th grade math into five distinct road markers or mile markers as we see over here. So follow along with me and I'll share with you the info that would make or help your child have a smoother journey, a more successful one, and much more enjoyable one. Hi, I'm Dr. Phoenix Pan, a performance coach at Dort Math. This channel is built for you to help you so your child can have a smoother journey with math. Together we can turn those math tears into smiles. If you like this channel, give us a thumb up. All right, before we get started, I want to share with you a couple of things about this big picture. Number one, math has five distinct stages. Stage on number one is down there, that's the foundational one, and then the fundamental ones over here, moving on to the functionals over here, and behind me, two more stages. One is fortress math, and the last one, fortress math, I'll explain that later, but fun math, yes, I did say fun. Math can be fun. All right, so what we're gonna do is that uh, second point, math is sequential. By that, I mean you can't skip around because each phase will help your child set up for the next one. What we're gonna do is give you a quick overview for each one of those phases that's um, coming onto your child's math journey. And I'm gonna share with you the ups and downs for each phase and what to look out for as you guide your child on their math journey. Well, let's start it with our first phase, the fundamental phase. It's literally from kindergarten to third grade. Our kids are learning basics, counting with numbers, add, subtract, and multiplying numbers. Among the three, subtraction is the hardest. So be sure you spend some time with your child mastering subtraction. Moving on. Some of you might be thinking, yeah, this is so basic, so easy. Not so. It's really critical to master this one because this phase is actually preparing for the next phase, specifically long division. Long division, next phase, often kids find it difficult, so make sure, make sure you master this phase with your child. Now let's talk about pitfalls. When we help our kids to master multiplication table, often we use flashcards. Now personally, I'm not a big fan of flashcards. But if you are using it with your child, watch out for this pitfall. They don't simply rely on multiplication table memorization. Specifically, memorization is a dead end, especially down the road when it comes to solving word problems. So watch out for that pitfall. Some fun facts. The first one is their unique learning style is coming alive. Make sure you absorb them. Spend some time with your kids. Second one, because they're so malleable in this phase, it's really easy to help them establish a good homework routine. The earlier, the better. Last one, again, they're so malleable, correct, messy handwriting is really easy in this phase. You'd be surprised how many points kids lose down the road just simply because we can't read their handwriting. They lose points and they get tripped up in their own calculations. So make sure one is one, not a seven. Seven looks like seven, not four. That's it for this phase. Let's move on to the next phase. All right, let's move on to the second phase, which is the foundational phase. This is the third grade to fifth grade material. Here, our kids are gonna learn four big concepts, starting from long division, Next one is decimal, percentage, and fractions. 
What you might not know is just how critical fraction is to our kids' math journey. I'll say it again, fraction is critical. Because from here onward, everything our kids are gonna learn and master on their math journey will depend on in one way or another on fraction, the concept. So let's talk about pitfalls. If master fractions did not happen, there are gonna be a lot of tears and headaches and heartaches. So the pitfall comes in from here. Many parents do not appreciate it enough by the concepts of fraction, how important and how critical it is. Especially if you have a kid who is starting to struggle a little bit or giving you a hard time around homework. You might be tempted to let them off the hook. You might be thinking, well, maybe it's gonna get better on its own or maybe someone else will teach, maybe the next semester teacher will help them. But I work, that's not been my experience. Often, it actually get worse. So I really, really encourage you to help your kids do whatever you can to help them master this concept of fraction. Some fun facts for this phase. Kids in this age love to show off what they learned. So bring them to the kitchen, one of the best place for fractions. Bake a cake. Cutting the cake is fraction. Measuring the ingredients has a lot of decimals. Setting the temperature for the oven and set the timer, they're all math. So take advantage of this phase as long as you can while they still like you and want to share all the stuff with you. That's it for this phase. Let's move on to the next phase. All right, let's talk about the third phase of this math journey. This is a long one, it's five years long. It includes three years of middle school pre-algebra part and two years of high school math. For most kids, that's algebra one and geometry. This is the functional math part of their journey. It's functional because this is the math we use to get by, uh, get along with each other, not being taken advantage or left behind. We use this math, for example, to balance our budget, buy a car, uh, take a look at the interest rate on the credit card, for example, or get a loan, manage mortgage, and of course, investing. So it's quite useful, basically. Now, it's not uncommon kids in this section, this phase start to struggle with math. After all, that's a lot of math coming at their way under this big umbrella of pre-algebra and algebra one. Now, if you have a kid who's struggling and it's younger, you really want to help them to overcome that math struggle as quick as possible, preferably before ninth grade, because after eighth grade, their transcript, the grades on the transcript, will become a permanent part of their application process, which will be used to apply for colleges and scholarships. Now, if you have an older kid who's struggling, don't panic. What I would really encourage you is to not focus solely on the grades because that'll just get everybody so frustrated. What you really want to do or consider is dig in, find out what the root cause is. At work, it's often some sort of key concept from earlier phase didn't work well. Uh, check with fraction to start with. All right, moving on to the pitfalls. There's a big one for this phase. It goes like this. In a perfect world, Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 should be taken back to back with geometry follow on that, right? But that's not typically how it happens for our kids. Our school system didn't set it up for that. Typically, a kid end up taking Algebra 1, another whole year of geometry before circling back to Algebra 2. That's really not ideal. Let me explain. You see, Algebra 2 is a heavier continuation of Algebra 1 material is denser and it needs a lot more work. So with a year, a whole year of geometry stuck in the middle, you can see why our kids coming back to Algebra 2 find it more difficult. And that's why the Algebra 2 is often commonly dubbed as the crash and burn course in high school math curriculum. So the smart thing to do is help your kid get a little more prepared for Algebra 2 the summer before. 
what I recommend at work for the math kids is to take either a free online core class, uh, Khan Academy is a good place, or go to a local community college and take a refresher course. Now, if you have an ambitious kid who is science driven, maybe even consider taking Algebra 2 uh, the summer before. That way, when they come back, Algebra 2 in high school would be a simple review course for them. Now, I know it sounds like a lot of effort just to prepare for one course, but it's so worth it. Uh, the effort is going to help them avoid the crash and burn Algebra 2. It's going to help to prepare them. Uh, get them far ahead, and it's going to protect their GPA. All right, moving on to the fun parts for this phase. Kids of this phase love to talk about colleges. They're very enthusiastic, so write on that with them. Also, at this age of kids have a potential latch on for a lifelong passion. So make sure you keep on exposing them to different job opportunities, career opportunities, different colleges, spend more time with them. All right, that's it for this phase. Let's move on to the next phase. All right, let's talk about a fourth phase, the fortress math phase. Now, compared to the last phase, the third one, the math here is higher math, includes algebra 2 and trigonometry slash pre-cal, as you can see behind me. Now, trig slash pre-cal means kids will take the trigonometry the first semester, and the second semester is the pre-calculus. Now, this is a really critical transitional phase because it's sort of a training ground for what's coming next. For most kids, it's either statistics or the calculus family. Now, a few things you might not know about this phase. Uh, because the material covered here is much denser, a lot more abstract, you will need a longer homework time to chew the material and really absorb it. Second thing, Trigonometry is actually a fun class. It's a combination of Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. So if you are struggling with Algebra 2, I really, really encourage you, don't give up on Algebra 2. Lastly, test taking skill becomes so critical in this phase. You really want to learn how to manage partial credits. OK, moving on to the pitfalls. One common pitfall I see at kids is that they give up on uh, Algebra 2 way, way, way too early. Now, because this fortress math is tied into the next phase, which for most kids is calculus, uh, where kids kind of drop off like flies, what you do in this phase makes a huge, huge difference. Now, please understand, I'm not saying every kid should be forced to take calculus classes, but if you want to study, say, physics, chemistry, biology, economics, dynamic systems, or engineering, you will need to pass calculus one. Also, pre-med. Uh, one of my kids wants to do the pre-med, so she ended up to take, uh, having to take calculus two, not because she is ever going to use or see the math again, but in order to make the cut, she did have to take calculus two class. That's it for this phase. I am looking forward to the next phase, which is the fun math, my favorite one. All right, let's talk about a fifth phase, the last one, the high fun math. Now, I'll concentrate on the calculus family because that's the most popular among my students. Now, in this particular calculus family, there are three classes, namely calculus one, calculus two, and calculus three. At high school level, they are called Calculus AB and Calculus BC. If you got here or if your kid got here, really give them a big pat on the back and hug them. It's a lot of work to get here, so congrats. Now, it's called fun math, this phase. It's because all those seemingly random things you had to memorize before, all of a sudden you can derive them. All of a sudden, they all make sense. It's really fun. Take, for example, volume of a sphere. I still remember till this day, my calculus high school teacher came in one day with a basketball and said, hey, with calculus, we can actually figure out the volume of this basketball, how much water I can put in there, and if I drill a hole on the bottom, we can even calculate how long it's going to drain the basketball, the water from it. Crazy, right? So much fun. This is where I got hooked on with math. All right, moving on to the pitfalls. 
high school math, uh, high school calculus, college calculus, they are not the same. Calculus in, high, uh, calculus in college level, it's much faster, it's much deeper, and the competition is a lot stiffer. So if you child end up taking calculus in high school, avoid the trap of taking calculus too at the beginning of the college career. It's just not worth it for their GPA, protect their GPA. And by the way, did you know that Calculus two is actually the hardest among the three calculus classes? All right, moving on, senioritis. Now, if you have a senior on the fence debating another year of math or just kind of coast, I totally get it. They worked hard. It's really tempting to just coast the last year of their high school career. On the other hand, this will be the last few semesters where you can really support your child. Take a little more risk because this is the last end phase where they will still have your support close by. Personally, I love to encourage the kids around me just to push a little more, take a little more risk while they still have parental support at home. All right, we've covered a lot. I really hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Remember at the beginning we were talking about, where was this info when I need it? Well, I hope you gain a valuable knowledge and insight that will guide you to help your child on their math journey and find the best path for them. Remember, parents are still the best advocate when it comes to their kids' math education. And it is my sincere hope with this knowledge, you can help your child have a journey that's smooth, that's pleasant, and very successful. Until next time, happy parenting.